EA Interviews, Episode 75. Inspiration, Transformation, Success Stories, and the Imperfect Action Round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. All right, Expert Authority World, I'm excited to be here with another great interview today. I have none other than model, entrepreneur, speaker, and CEO of TWIP, Lauren Koenig, who specializes in travenality. We're going to get into this with you in just a bit, right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lauren Koenig. Lauren, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? I'm great. Hi, Mario. How are you? Feeling great. It's great to uh, have you here today. I know. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for a long time to be on this show. So I'm glad we finally got our acts together and our busy schedules and we made it happen. Absolutely. So let me ask you, what made you want to start TWIP? What inspired you to start your company? Oh, my goodness. Oh, you know what? I've asked, been asked this question a lot, but you know what? It has to always come down to a cereal box. Really? I swear to God, a cereal box. Um, you know, it's funny enough, my family owns a summer home up in Canada. And when I was a little girl, I would sit every morning eating breakfast and I would eat my Canadian shreddies. And every single day on the back of the cereal box, and I couldn't read it because it was in French. And so I would ask my mom, like, what does it say? I can't read it. And it was so funny because she'd always be like, you know, what, Lauren, I don't know French. Just go learn French if you want to learn how to read the back of the cereal box. And so you know what? I went and learned French. I went to Ball State University. I'm very proud of it. Chirp, chirp, go Cardinals. And um, I minored in French. And after college, um, I wanted to go to France, obviously, to learn my, you know, to be able to speak my newfound language. And no one wanted to travel. Everyone was having babies or they were getting married or, you know, they were like, I'm broke and poor as every college student is. And so I tapped into like-minded people, the French club of Ball State University, and they were like, more, you know what? You should not go to France. Um, you should move there. I was oh. like, okay, challenge accepted. Hold my beer. And so they held my beer for about a year and a half when I moved to France after college, fell in love with travel, fell in love with different cultures and, you know, this big, great, beautiful world that's out there. And I started to really understand the, the motives behind why people traveled, why they didn't travel, um, what prevented them from traveling. And that was my cue to pretty much like abandon everything I went to college for and um, go down the world of travel and then travel tech. And then basically, um, you know, long story short, it was curiosity of the back of their cereal box that helped me, you know, want to dive into, like I said, the, the travel industry and start to solve problems um, that I was seeing in front of my face um, on a daily basis. So that's it, it was kind of like a, a nugget that was always inside of me, and I didn't discover it until many years later. But I think that's really the underlying cause. That is a great story. So <laughs> what, what's what been the most interesting thing you've experienced since you've started? <laughs> well, that's a loaded question. Um, uh, that's what you said you wanted, right? <laughs> exactly. Don't be on the show. Mario will trick you. He'll say, here's the questions to prepare with. And then he'll give you curveballs. Um, After uh, you said you wanted some. So, yeah. <laughs> What's the most unexpected thing? Most unexpected thing. Um, I would have to say it's always harder than you realize. You know, you think that running a company is like, okay, I got this. You learn something, you take 10 steps forward, but it's really 10 steps forward and a thousand feet backwards. And that's really exhausting. And I, I think to realize how much stamina you need as an entrepreneur is just incredible. You know, I get people emailing and calling and texting me, you know, on a weekly basis. Hi, Lauren, I'm so-and-so. I want to start my own business. What should I do? And I was like, well... Uh, <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't. Um, and I would say if you do make sure you know and you admit that it's the hardest thing you're ever going to do in your entire life and that you need to sacrifice literally everything that you, everything that you stand for, <laughs> like it just needs to go out the window and that you need to start over. So I always say if you want to start a business, it's like going to college, to university and crossing 
you know, the line to get your diploma and then someone shaking your hand and then someone taking your diploma away from you and then lighting it on fire and having to go start all back over again for four years. And that's being an entrepreneur. Their learning curve is incredible. And, you know, you think, you know, but you really don't. Um, and that's what you need to go and figure out. So I think for me, just the most surprising, unexpected thing is how incredibly difficult it is. I'm a very strong person. Um, I was an athlete. You know, I have a resiliency inside of me, but there are days where I just, you know, I'm crying in that cereal that I, <laughs> that I was drinking eating when I was six years old. I'm like, oh, why did I do this? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a long journey. It's a tough journey, but it's also very rewarding at the same time in many different ways. All right, Lauren. So I've seen some of the rewards you've been able to achieve and it's pretty impressive. If you could go into a little bit more detail as to how you help people and who you help, I think everyone would be interested to know what you what you actually get to do. Even though it is difficult at times, let's go into detail about what you actually are doing. I love it. Lauren, what the heck do you do with your life? <laughs> well, Mario, let me tell you. Um, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of TWIP, which stands for Travel with Interesting People. Um, we are an AI engagement solution platform uh, for travel brands. So we basically help travel brands understand their clients' travel behavior. So I don't know if you know, but everyone has a travel behavior. We're all different in different phases of this world. So we're different when we're in school, we're different when we're at work, we're different when it's at home, we're at home, um, but we're also different when we travel. And so You're this, talking about the, their travenality, right? I am. I am. There you go. Exactly. Everyone has their own travenality. So we help travel brands and, and lifestyle brands as well understand their clients' travenality. And then with this secret, powerful information, um, we help brands better market to their customers to understand their travelality, to speak to the core of them, the, the, the needs, the wants, and the desires of a user, of a traveler, um, and to really you know, help personalize their product, services, and content. Because we all now know nowadays uh, personalization is just kind of a used up, dirty word that means nothing. Um, and brands really need to start you know, focusing on their customer and really what they want. So you know, we're kind of those that, that in the eyes and ears and the insights of, um, of travel behavior. And, and we're definitely um, one of the first to be really focusing on, on that in the travel industry. So that's what TWIP does. And where are the, some of the cool places that people can expect to travel to? <laughs> well, I think that depends on truly the company that uses our services. Um, to be honest, um, you know, the great thing about the travelality is when you understand the user's travel behavior, you can apply that um, to your product and be able to, you know, basically I call Spotify it or Netflix it. I mean, wouldn't it be cool to be able to have a product um, that, you know, for travel and, and basically get recommended things based on your travel behavior or your travelality? I mean, it kills me because, you know, one of the biggest problems is that, you know, I've been traveling a lot this year. And, you know, I Google a hotel for X, Y, and Z in Barcelona, and then X travel brand is emailing me hotels for Barcelona four months after I went to Barcelona. I'm like, listen, homie, like that ship has sailed, you lost me, and you snooze, you lose. Like, it, it, it bothers me that I have to explain to travel brands of who I am as a traveler nowadays. Like, they should already know I travel enough and I offer up that information willingly because I'm sick of having to type in my preferences and settings and whatnot. Um, and so I think that the travel brands need to actually take a step up um, in their game and start offering better, uh, better content services and products um, in personalization as a whole. So as for some added context, you say you travel a lot. I think a lot of people say they travel a lot, but if we can put it into some empirical numbers, what, uh, <laughs> what, what are your, what would you say? How many miles a year do you travel? You know, I don't know mileage. I, I actually, um, I've never really cared about the mileage because uh, for me, it's more about kind of like putting that pin in the map, you know, um, I will say I've been to 17 countries within this calendar year and within okay. the last 12 months, I've been to 17 different countries. So, so that's, a, that's a good reference because some people say I travel a lot and they're w once a year, twice a year, once a quarter. And that's more than most, I know, statistically, but 17 countries already. Yes. Um, you know, I'm kind of like, Forget the domestic travel, not that I'm belittling in any way, shape or form. But I mean, I always believe like, hey, go the distance because you never know when politically, financially, you know, physically, 
emotionally, you're not able to travel, right? So if anyone's like, oh, should I go to the West Coast or Tahiti? I'm like, Tahiti, Tahiti, go long, go long, go far. So um, the reason why we actually, um, why I've traveled so much this past year is we were so lucky enough to win $15,000 of free flights from Lufthansa and Swiss Airlines and um, because of our Travenality technology. So we were recognized as the winner for that competition last April in 2018. And so Lufthansa awarded this, this money, you know, this, this money to us. And they were like, you have one year to spend it. And I was like, what did I say? But hold my beer. <laughs> I was like, I'll be right back. Um, and it was really great for me to do this um, with my co-founder as well. We've, we've traveled to a couple countries. Um, mostly because it helped me understand and reminded me of why I started the company in the first place. And if you're not using your product and you're not out there researching and looking and, and talking to people, you will lose the heart and soul. And, um, you know, as much as travel is glamorous and people are like, why are you traveling? Do you ever work? I'm like, please, I work. I just work in different time zones. I mean, like it's, it's ridiculous. So, but with this past year has allowed me to dive a little bit deeper into travel behavior um, doing the original research that I, when I started this company, understanding, you know, travelers as a whole, what's out there, who's innovating, who's not innovating, what companies are lagging, who is, you know, out there and, and really servicing their, their clients, their customers and, and making contacts all over the world. Cause travel means what to go from point A to point B. That's it. Like it doesn't say it's quickly, fast. You I would want to enjoy the process. Exactly. But my point is that travel just, what I, when someone says I travel, I hear I breathe air. Great. That's good. I do tell too. Me, tell me more. And I want to know more information. And that's really like the mission behind TWIP is to really help, you know, define that travelality. And so being able to, to travel to these 17 countries, um, 18, hopefully by the end of the year, um, we'll be able to, you know, just tweak our product and make it better, um, you know, as fast as possible. That's really exciting because I see five, ten years from now how this can apply to everyone, both businesses and personal. You know, no matter what you're doing, people love to travel yeah. and you, it sounds like you have a golden ticket to make it better for everyone. So the people that are uh, – I love the name, Travel with Interesting People. So dive a little bit deeper into that as far as why, why didn't you pick Travel with Boring People? So I have to give my actual final, like real shout out to my, my homie, Bo Roberts. Um, he is a, a big actor out in LA and he's a very dear friend of mine. And it's so funny because, um, he's got this, he's such a handsome little man. I love him to death. And I shouldn't say little, like meaning he's just this like punk, you know, he's like, like Indiana and like just hot little like actor. He's just so great. His personality is so spunky. He's so creative. And he's a very good friend of mine. And um, I was really trying to think of this, you know, a creative, awesome name that, you know, branded well for, for my company. And I remember one day we were walking in the subway and I was like, just racking my brain. I was like, I don't know what to name my company. It's not cool. I don't know what to do. And I swear to God, no shit. He just looked at me and he's like, well, why don't you just go on a twip and name it travel with interesting people? And I'm like, Scusa? I was like, I'm, re I'm trademarking that Minyana. He was <laughs> like, and, and, and ever since then, I mean, he's such a creative guy, but I'm like, this, just on the spot. And I was like, because everyone's interesting. Everyone has their own story. Everyone's unique. And I want to celebrate that. And that's what, that's what's important to me, you know? So, you know, I believe that everyone's got a story to tell. And I think by bringing people together, it just makes this world more interesting. So it's, it's much deeper on a lot of levels, but, um, you know, but it's a fun name. <laughs> it is. You're like, hold my beer. I need to <laughs> cement this in it forever. So from everyone that's traveled with you so far and your company, what's the biggest success story you could say that you've been able to help someone achieve? Oh my goodness. That's a tough question. Um, I think really, you know, we started off as a community, right? So TWIP started off with a community. And it's not that that dream is, you know, has been finished. Um, we've just kind of put that product to the side right now, knowing that as a consumer, uh, for a consumer travel product, we need a lot more capital um, and a lot more runway to, to build this community. And I believe that um, 
the B2B travel side is the way that we're going right now because brands really need help in this area and it's what we excel at. So we basically took kind of that um, the core tech out of our B2C platform and started licensing it to brands because, you know, we're small, we're agile. And, you know, in the travel world, you have like the big guys and the little guys and like there's nowhere in between. And so the big guys need the little guys to innovate. And that's something that we were able to, to, to provide for, for these larger companies. Um, but I think that, you know, even in just the earlier days, I don't really have a great answer to your question in terms of like something specific, but I think that, you know, in the early days of really, um, honing in on travel behavior and understanding that people are different away from home. So the the definition of travelality is why someone travels when you take away the elements of time, destination, and price. You um, There's 10 different travelities and a user can be a percentage of some or all of them. So with this information, you then can recommend product services and content. Um, so I think like the best like success that we have done is, is being able to take the travelality and, and, and turn it into a product that brands can actually digest. You know, we've taken be, you know travel behavior, something that is in front of us every single day, and we've been able to package it and and turn you know with our algos and our technology and be able to kind of package it for brands to be able to offer to consumers on a broader scale. So you know, we're kind of like that the algo behind like you know Spotify or Netflix, that recommendation engine and travel that people have been trying to crack forever. So it's not like one you know one specific travel story. It's that you will see this. And many years to come, and you will start to see people talk about their travelality. They'll be shopping via their travelality, and they're going to understand that it's really the only important thing when it does come to travel. First, you know, destination, time, and price will come second. But people need to be thinking about their travelality when they start to shop for travel. Well, I think that's a huge success story because being able to break it down and understand people. I same thing with me. If I'm looking something up to purchase, to invest in, to travel to. I get the same emails. Hey, would you like to do yep. such and such? I'm like, uh, that was three months ago. I know. It drives me crazy. <laughs> People don't realize that. You know, when they're asking me for marketing and everything, they're going, what do you think about this, this, or this? It's like, who are you talking to? Yeah. If you're talking to a millennial on a billboard, wrong yep. market message. Yep. If you're talking to, you know what I mean? Everything has to match up. It's not that the idea is bad. The execution of it is though, in most cases I found. But with what you're doing, that's huge because now you can say, hey, here's the travelality types. Yep. Figure out where they go into and now everything else can calculate from there to give them the best 100%. experience. You you nailed it, Mario. You 100% nailed it because, you know, everyone, you know, you have your demographic, their psychographics of a user, but like the burning desire of why someone travels in the core of them, that's their travelality. And if you can understand their travelality, then you can just, you know, then everything's just downhill from there. And actually recommend the right hotel for that type of person yeah. versus just randomly, there's 30 within a five mile radius. Well, that's great. But now I need to decipher yeah. through all this crap. It's tough. It's even tough for me too. I mean, my co-founder is just a whiz at flights and I'm always like, yo, personal flight lady, like, please help me find this flight. And people do that to me too. I mean, I get, you know, phone calls, text, emails all the time. Like, Hey Lauren, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And there's so many factors that go into that. And it's really hard to keep up because I need, I'm like, I need to ask you like 10 questions. And if I understand those 10 questions then the sky is the limit. Right. Um, but it's just understanding like really their travelality and, and when they, Oh, well, that doesn't matter. I'm like, no, but it does because anything that they're asking me, all I need is the answer to these certain questions. And then I can actually dish a world of travel for them. Um, because it's a very segmented, saturated, fragmented industry. And we know this and it's only getting bigger. Um, the travel industry is one of the, you know, I think it's 10% of, you know, it, it's just, it's such a large market and there's so much innovation that, that needs to still happen in the travel space. Um, and um, it's the, the big companies are not listening enough to the consumers right now. Like I was at a conference the other day and they were like, so do you think that airline, it was like a round table. Do you think airlines are innovative innovators or followers? And there was a couple of people in the airlines there and like, Oh, we think we're innovators. And we're all like, no, <laughs> no, you guys are followers. And we're all like, Please, because they're just they're too big right now, and you need to have a small team to be agile to move quick enough, and that's what. So why the little guys are so important to be always innovating in the travel space, and we're talking from 
innovation down to, you know, alerts on your cell phone if your luggage has been boarded onto the plane, gate changes to cell phone push notifications to recommendation engines to even, you know, knowing your preferences when sitting on an airplane, um, knowing the shortest distance um, between, you know, do you take planes, trains, automobiles? I mean, travel comes into rental, it comes into OTAs, it comes into destination recommendations. Um, it just, there's such a large, large world. Um, and it's exciting to see the innovations that happening, that's for sure. Um, but we still have a long way to go and we're just really excited to be a part of that recommendation, um, kind of self-discovery. We, you know, even with Travenality, you can, um, you know, if you're compatible with someone else's Travenality, you know, if you're going to be a good travel partner is another, you know, product of ours because something, you know, that's important nowadays is people are different away from home. So if you take two best friends, and you put them together and they had different travelities. Well, the days of our lives is about to happen. <laughs> it's just like drama, drama, drama. And no one wants that on a travel experience when it's so much time and money that you invest in. I mean, experiences are really, um, they're expensive and you can do it cheaply, but there's a lot of people that's where, especially the new generation, the younger generation is where they're putting their money is experiences and not houses and cars and things like that. So there's a lot of weight um, being put on these these trips. It sounds like you could do a, a spin-off show of inter- interesting people with uh, that like to travel. Interesting scenarios like purposely <laughs> put the wrong ones together and be like, all right, we're going to see what happens over here. It'd be like <laughs> – Mario. I know, I know. Mario, we might be working on something. You never know I, what we're up to. <laughs> but – Using your powers for good, it will help people. Yeah. But you're absolutely right because I like to travel when I speak and, you know, fly in a couple of days early, a couple of days after and, you know, enjoy it. But sometimes it's like, oh, my gosh, you wouldn't, you know, other speakers and authors are, well, you wouldn't believe what I had to do to get here. I'm yeah. like, oh, someone didn't plan. It's tough. And that's a travelality type. Someone who plans, someone who wings it, you know, does someone travel with, you know, their pets? Does someone work on a vacation? You know, is someone competitive? Do they travel for events? Do they travel for leisure or health or wellness or adrenaline? I mean, there's many different things that goes into that. And one of the one of the travelities um, is um, an, an urbanite, someone who travels for um, you know urban dwelling, what they want, when they want, how they want. Um, and someone there's another travelity called um, altruist, someone who travels to help others. So I'm very altruistic and very urbanite when I travel. Um, it's funny because I'm a maverick in my personal life. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, could you be more of a risk taker? But when I travel, I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to jump out of that plane. I don't need to eat that snake. Like, I don't need to go zip lining. Like, I'm not that. I'm just not that girl on that trip. I mean, like, I think I just grew up with a brother who went to the ER too many times and jumping off of like swing sets and shit like that. So I just, I'm very like, I don't, I'm not a maverick and I'm not an Epicurean. Like I could care less where we eat at all. Like it's not. And then there's people that are like, oh my gosh, they have new creme brulee at this tiny little Parisian cafe. And I'm like, I could care less. I don't. As long I don't as they care. have food. <laughs> right. So there's just all of these things that go into it. And if you, you know, if you give people um, the opportunity to travel with someone with, with, someone with similar travelities, um, the chances are much higher for a more enjoyable experience. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that, and I'm curious what all the travelality types are. Where would someone find that information out? Absolutely. So if you're a brand that wants to work with us, you can just go to www.twip.co. Uh, we're Twip Trips on all social media, so it's really easy to find us, and you can reach out to us directly. Um, but stay tuned. We still have tons of stuff coming out for consumers um, in terms of being able to take that travelality assessment. Um, and we're um, actually talking to a good handful of brands right now that are going to start offering our technology. So if you start getting recommendation engines in your email, and if travel brands are starting to know you a little bit better, it might be because of our of our tech. <laughs> it sounds like uh, you got a lot of good information you could put into a book also. Hmm. Those personality type, <laughs> the travenality types, I, I really am curious what they are. So I'm going to check that out. Um, There's 10 of them. Finish. I'll tell you right now. Altruist, culturist, Epicurean, Imaginavo, Sol- Solitaire, Purist, Maverick, Victor, Wayfair, Urbanite. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious, I, I think I, I we're very similar because for business, it's like, you know, we're going to make the moon happen. And then when yeah. you're traveling, it's where's the pool? Where's the hot tub? Where are some tacos? <laughs> hey, you want to tr- drive 35 more minutes away from where we're at? Yeah. Not really just flew to get here. We're, yep. we're good. 
I feel you. <clears throat> All right. So tell me about your speaking. How has that helped your business? You know, it's definitely helped. I'm not going to lie. You know, I went to school to be an investigative reporter. So um, I went to Ball State University. I was a TCOM, telecommunications major, news option. So I was always digging for stories. I was, you know, always in front of the camera. Um, And that definitely, I think, helped in my life of public speaking. Um, It didn't necessarily make it easier. Um, It just gave me a little bit more, a little more reference to what it's like when it comes to lights, camera, action. But um, you know, we're going to be really, um, pushing me as a speaker in terms of, uh, travelality and travel behavior. Um, I get a lot, um, I get asked a lot to be on podcasts or a mentor, you know, certain, um, retreats. Um, I'm actually going up to BC Canada in a couple of weeks for a conference, a lot of round tables, um, anything where opinions are needed. I'm, you know, happy to show up. Um, but the speaking is definitely picking up, which is great. I love being on stage. Like I said, it's not easy. Um, I presented at Focus Right, which is the largest travel conference in the world about a year and a half ago. Um, I've done multiple competitions, things like that. So, you know, getting my feet wet and, and, and definitely, picking up the pace in terms of the speaking. Um, but, um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it's, it comes and goes, but it's, it's happening more and more, um, as uh, TWIP gets older and we're finding our niche in the market. Very good. Well, I have one more question for you before we go to the imperfect action round. Uh oh. <laughs> and it's interesting because I call this the expert authority, roller coaster because that's like we we're talking about with entrepreneurial doing stuff there's variables how do you adjust form so i've been asking stuff such as you know if you were president what would you do and yeah. you know if you could talk to anyone else in the world if you could talk to anyone in the world um who would it be stuff like that and maybe some softball stuff like who's your favorite celebrity but i got a this actually fits really perfect with you because, I answered to all those questions, by the way. I was like, darn it. I knew those answers. Uh, one of them I always ask – not always ask. I mean it depends on the person. But um, it's in it's in the – what is it? Rolodex. It's in the arsenal. It's in the whatever. Arrow uh-huh. in the quiver deal. Yeah. It's one I ask people. Where's one place in the world you would love to travel to that you haven't yet? <gasps> Thailand, Sweden, and Tokyo. Not one. Three. <laughs> Why? Oh, wow. Thailand because of the beach with Leonardo DiCaprio. The nice ties. <laughs> right. Um, Tokyo because I'm obsessed with uh, the Japanese culture and sushi. And uh, Sweden because I love Vikings. <laughs> okay. It's really as simple as it comes down to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honest answer, 60 seconds or less. You're ready for the imperfect action oh, round. Goodness. And uh I'm just okay. going to throw this out there. Yeah, the beach looked beautiful, but you don't want to go there because of it. You, you want to go there for the beauty and stuff, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. Okay. I was going to say you saw the whole movie, right? Not just the first part of oh. it. <laughs> I would prefer not to get – The movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, the beach. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't want to travel after that one. But <laughs> I don't want nice. to eat by a shark and kicked <laughs> off a beautiful island. No, I, I want nothing to do with that. I would love to go for the beauty of it and the full moon festival. I mean, and I love Thai food, even though I'm not an Epicurean, which is funny. Um, you know, I actually need to reevaluate where I want to go um, because I've been to so many places and I feel like I need to readjust my list, which I never thought I would get to, but it's exciting for me. That's so. a good problem. Yeah, I think so. All right. So we're going to thank our sponsor and come back for the imperfect action round. <laughs> Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. All right, Lauren, we are back with the imperfect action round. Lauren, are you ready to take imperfect action? Do it. First question. What is the fastest path to the cash in your experience? Oh my goodness. Um, besides robbing a bank, no, I'm totally kidding. Um, listen to your customer, listen to exactly what they want. 
Um, understand what their KPIs are. I think that's really important. Even though you have this amazing product um, and you think you know their needs, wants, and desires, you need to ask them. Like everyone has their own plan and their own business and their own KPIs that they need to hit. So understanding a company's um, their roadmap and and getting to know them and their problems and solving for them um, is is definitely where you should put your focus, especially in B two B. Excellent. What is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and how can they fix it? They're not being agile enough. Um, I know that comes down to budget, to personnel, to, to money, to timing. Um, but, you know, companies need to have, you know, leaner, smaller teams so they can move quicker. Um, moving quicker um, sometimes, you know, leads to moving faster and being first to market. Um, and again, listening to their um, to their customer. So I believe that, Right now, especially in the travel space, um, personalization is huge, but really cracking that code and what that means is something that they've been promising for a long time. And now that the materials are out there and the products and services are out there to actually like, get under it and, and deliver. Very good. Third, third thing, thirdly, whatever the question is. All right. The third one, what is the best way to maximize customer lifetime value? Best way to maximize customer lifetime value. Um, make sure there's always another product to, to be able to upsell them. You know, um, you know, make if they get bored, make sure they come back for something more. Um, having one product is great, but always making sure that you can upsell them later or give them an additional offering is something um, that's really important because they're going to always they're going to want to be there for your brand, for your service. They're going to stay for one reason, but they're going to come back for something new and exciting because they don't want to miss out. And they already know that they've taken the time to get to know the team. They know what to expect of the personnel because, you know, it's a lot harder to go somewhere in a different direction or go work with another team or get to know someone all over again. That's why losing personnel on a team is so hard. You have to go replace someone. And it's the same thing in business. So always having a product um, available, you know, in your back pocket to kind of offer them at a later later time upsell is, is a great idea. Love that answer. Always stay innovative. Yep. What is a book you would recommend that's made the biggest difference for your business? Oh, I have so many. I don't know which one. Um, I would probably say, can I do two? I'm doing two. I don't care. <laughs> There's yes, you can. One, one is Presence by Amy Cuddy. Um, it's amazing. It's fake it till you become it, not fake it till you make it. Um, she really focuses on body language and, you know, she was the one that coined the superwoman pose, um, really being able to, you know, using body, you know, body language as a power. I loved that book. It was so helpful to me as an entrepreneur, as well as to, um, anyone that is on my team. Um, and then, uh, Tim Ferriss, uh, tools for Titans. That's an awesome book. That's just a big old encyclopedia of like everyone's tricks and tips. And that's a great read when you don't feel like finishing something from beginning to end. And you can just open up the book and I'm going to read this today. So those are two books that I love. Great recommendations. Great recommendations. So where can people learn more? Uh, like I said before, um, go to twip.co or follow us on, on social media at Twip Trips. We're really stockable online. So um, <laughs> like... I've always been a very stockable person. It's terrible. It's just everything's out there. Easy to contact us. You can contact me directly at lauren at trip.co for any questions or any businesses that want to work with us. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from anyone. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. It's been an absolute pleasure and you totally rocked it. Thanks. I appreciate you having me. All right. Well, Expert Authority World, we got another great interview. We'll see you on the next one. Have a great day and God bless. I'll see you tomorrow. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I sure did. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the show. And also be sure to check out eainterviews.com for complete show notes, the full interview video experience, links to the resources we mentioned, and more. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you tomorrow.